Hi, Sonic fans. This is my tribute to the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, series. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining how, back in the day, the Sonic the Hedgehog games, the comics, and the TV shows were all connected in certain ways, where it wasn't completely uh, an issue like it was later on with complete people complaining and people saying they like this Sonic this version of Sonic better than the other version of Sonic. Sonic was always the same character until they destroyed him in the 2010s for the most part. So I just want to do a whole thing where I'm going to explain since no one else is able to do it, I'm going to actually explain how all the comics, the TV shows and the games are all connected. And this is just my theory, it's just for fun. And uh let's so anyway, Let's get started as the ultimate tribute to Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so this is the true Sonic timeline. So, chapter one, I'm going to say the first part of the timeline, uh, number one, is the pilot episode to Sonic Underground. Because Sonic is a baby. And, of course, he has his brother Manic and his sister Sonya. Uh, Sonic's mom gives uh, her children away. She's afraid that Robotnik is going to kidnap them and uh, and all that kind of stuff. And like the wizard says that her children are special. So anyway, that's the first chapter, the very beginning of Sonic, is the pilot of Sonic Underground. Not the whole show, just the pilot. Okay, with me so far? Good. So part two, the next chapter is the... Uh, one of the issues of Sonic the Comic from the UK, and there was a different Sonic comic than the Archie Sonic comics. In this comic, and I forget what issue it is, but it's pretty early in the issues. It might be issue number 4 or 18 or 11 or whatever. Sonic is orange on the cover. That's, the, what, that's what you need to know. It's a comic that actually explains how Sonic gets his powers, his superpowers. So, we can assume, since Sonic is a little older, that this takes place after the events of him being a baby in the pilot of Sonic Underground. So, in this issue of Sonic the Comic, they explain that Dr. Robotnik was originally known as Dr. Kentobor. And he was actually a good guy, and he was helping the animals of Mobius, and uh, he was doing experiments and stuff. And he actually found a way to uh, make Sonic faster... And he also found a way to, to turn him blue, which is really interesting. And then there was an accident that happened. And uh, I didn't read the comic in full, but some accident occurred. And Dr. Uh, Kintobor, he got transformed into Dr. Robotnik. He became evil. And then Sonic, you know. So basically, it's actually kind of like Mr. Freeze from Batman. How he was a good person and then he got thrown into the into the ice and then he became bitter and evil and all that stuff so it reminds me of mr freeze from batman okay so like i said uh we're still on chapter one so the next part in the timeline is sonic the hedgehog 1991 for the sega genesis sonic is alone it's the next chapter uh and the next chapter after that i'm gonna say is sonic for the master system and it has different levels so it isn't the same game as the Genesis game, aside from Green Hill Zone. So it basically is a completely different game. So we can assume it takes place right after Sonic 1, the video game, and he's just running through more levels by himself. It's perfect place in the timeline. The next chapter in the timeline, I'm going to say, is the Sega Sonic the Hedgehog arcade game. Why? Because, well, Tails is not here, Knuckles is not here, and it was uh, released in 1992, I think, in Japan, and in 93. It's in the right place in the timeline. And the more I think about it, Ray the Flying Squirrel is like the early version of Tails. And Mighty, the Armadillo, is like the early version of Knuckles. So anyway, underrated game. It's special. It's a great game. And I think it should be in the timeline. It, it makes sense, because Mighty the Armadillo returns... Mighty the Armadillo is my favorite Sonic character, aside from Sonic and maybe Shadow or whatever. Mighty is important to the timeline of Sonic. He appears a lot, so it's important to mention him in the timeline. So why not have this be here? Okay, so the next chapter I'm going to say is Tails Adventure for the Sega Game Gear. 
And why? Be well, because this the events in this game take place before Tails ever met Sonic the Hedgehog. So he's on his own, you know, he's really young, of course. Tails is uh, traditionally young in the Sonic series. And since it takes place before he ever met Sonic, I'm going to say all that stuff was going on around the same time that Sonic was running around by himself and he met Mighty and Ray. Then, you know. So that's the next chapter, Tails Adventure. It takes place after Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. After Tails Adventure, we have the series of Sonic Underground. Basically the whole show. And it fits there in the timeline because Tails is not in the show. But Sonic does meet Knuckles for the first time here. Which is a little conflicting because a lot of us like to think that Sonic first met Knuckles in Sonic 3. But then again, he may have already uh, met him originally in Sonic Underground. Then later on, like a few years later, he maybe he sees him again on Angel Island after after a couple of years. So maybe Sonic does recognize Knuckles in Sonic 3, but the first time he meets him is in Sonic Underground. So after Sonic Underground the show, the next uh, thing in the timeline is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis. He meets Tails. It's the events of Sonic 2. Good place in the timeline. Perfect. Next title I'm going to say is Sonic 2 for the Master System. Tails is kidnapped by Robotnik, and Sonic has to rescue him. And it, just like Sonic 1 for the Master System, it has completely different levels from the Genesis version of Sonic 2. So it really should not be called Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because it's a completely different game. Um, they really should have renamed that title. But anyway, it's different events that happen, where... Uh, it's already established that Sonic and Tails know each other, and they're, they're best friends, right? They're best buds. So, Sonic wants to rescue him. And, of course, they became best friends in the chapter before. So this should take place right after Sonic 2 for the Genesis. It makes sense. Okay, so after Sonic 2 for the Master System, the next chapter is Sonic the Hedgehog Chaos for the Sega Master System. Again, Sonic and Tails running around, getting rings, defeating the Bad Nicks, and defeating Robotnik. No Knuckles. Perfect place in the timeline. No debate there. Alright, now we're on Chapter 2. Now, I already I said Chapter 2 before, but this is like the second wave. That's what I'll call it. Second wave. Alright, the second wave in the timeline. The next chapter after Sonic Chaos is The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog the TV series. Because it's just Sonic and Tails there. You got Scratch and Grounder, Robotnik, and Sally... Acorn appears in the finale of the show, which was a Christmas special, which I think was called Sonic Christmas Blast. And since Sally appears at the very end of that show, it, it establishes that the fact that they, they just started to meet each other, and that the next chapter coming up will be the Sat AM cartoon and the Sonic comics. So it's perfect that Sally appears at the very end of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, because they were showing how him meeting new people through the games. Like I already mentioned before, he meets Ray and Mighty, you know, he meets Knuckles, he meets Tails. It all fits perfectly in how I'm explaining this, in my opinion. So, after the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog TV series, the next chapter is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine for the Sega Genesis. Why? Because, well, this game is based off of that show, and Scratch and Grounder and Coconuts are in the game. So, it's really perfect. The next chapter after Mean Bee Machine, I'm going to say, is the Sat AM Sonic cartoon and the Sonic the Hedgehog comics, both uh, debuted in 1993, and it's perfect. It fits in line with coming right after Mean Bean Machine. More characters Sonic meets, uh, Tails is still here, it's, it's perfect. So the next chapter after the Sat AM Sonic cartoon and the Sonic uh, comic debuted is Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball for the Sega Genesis. It's the darkest Sonic game on the Sega Genesis, and it does feature a bunch of the Freedom Fighters, yes, in-game, in sprites, from the Sat AM Sonic cartoon and the Sonic comics. Sally Acorn is in Sonic Spinball. Okay, so, then after Sonic Spinball, the next chapter I'm going to say is Sonic CD. Why? I don't know. It's 1993, and also the manual of Sonic CD mentions Sally Acorn. So it still fits in with the timeline of the characters meeting each other. 
It's also the first time Sonic meets Amy. Amy didn't exist before Sonic CD, so it's perfect. And really, um, it just fits. Third wave. Okay, so after Sonic CD, we have Sonic Drift. Why? Well, because at the end of Sonic CD, uh, and of course Tails is not in Sonic CD, there's a, an image of Tails next to a car, and, and it says, See you next game. So basically, they're telling you the next chapter in the timeline after Sonic CD is Sonic Drift. Plus, Amy returns, who debuted in the last title, so why not? It fits. So Amy's still around, right? So after Sonic CD is Sonic Drift. So uh, next chapter after Sonic Drift is Sonic the Hedgehog 3 for the Sega Genesis. He sees Knuckles again after a couple of years since the Underground days. And this time he, you know, he has a, a conflict with Knuckles. Which Sonic has always had a conflict with Knuckles, so. And maybe you can say something like uh, Knuckles has changed since the Underground days or something like that. Like he isn't exactly the same as he was during the Underground days. Now he's become more suspicious of other people because now he he rediscovered his roots and returned to and he discovered Angel Island. Whereas during the Underground days, maybe you can say something like he was wandering around and he was confused and he didn't know what his purpose in life was. And and since the years of the separation of uh, Sonic and Knuckles going the separate ways after the Underground days, Sonic meets Tails, you know, he finds more of a purpose, right? Defeating Robotnik, all that stuff, meeting the Freedom Fighters. Well, Knuckles found his own path and... He he left the underground cities, and then eventually he found Angel Island, and the Emerald called him, you know. Okay, so after Sonic 3, the next chapter, I'm going to say is Sonic and Knuckles for the Genesis. Well, it takes place, it, it's, a, you know, around the same timeline, so. And they were originally one title when you combine the cartridges, so it fits. Okay, so after Sonic and Knuckles, I'm going to say is a Sonic comic. And I forget the number of the issue of this from the Archie Sonic comics. Just because of the cover and the era where it's just showing all these different adventures Sonic, uh, Sally, and the Freedom Fighters have against Dr. Robotnik. It's just showing how they're still part of the Sonic series. They're still relevant. They're still in line with the games still. Because this is only one year after Sonic Spinball where... Sally appeared in the in the title. So, you know, it's just important to mention that the Archie Sonic comics during the early 90s, they're still going on. The next chapter I'm going to say is this Archie Sonic comic, and I forget the issue, of course, but it's a, the issue where uh, a pseudo-Sonic appears, and he's like a robot Sonic. This is like uh, another version of Metal Sonic. So once again, it establishes the fact that the Sonic comics are in line with the Sonic games, purposefully so, because in my opinion, back in the day, the canon of Sonic was the comics, the shows, and the games, especially the comics with the games. The shows do get a little confusing, but the shows still, even the shows, they still line up just enough to fit in with the games and the comics as well. And it's just really annoying to be a Sonic fan because you got all the Sonic fans complaining about, oh, uh, the com the comics aren't canon, they're their own thing, the shows are their own thing, it's not canon. This is not so. Later on, they started doing stuff like that when they invented Sonic Boom, and that takes place in a different universe. But back in the day, back in like the glory years of Sonic, they were fairly consistent. Sonic actually did have a canon, and it did go across into different media forms. It wasn't just the games as the canon. It was also the comics that connected with the games and the shows. Uh, it's really obnoxious that uh, the people think it's not like that. Okay, so uh, the next chapter after that Sonic comic in particular, I'm going to say is Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble for the Sega Game Gear. Well, we got Fang the Sniper that's introduced here, who was originally titled Knack the Weasel. Knuckles is back, and it fits perfectly in the timeline. Why not? And it's in the year of 94, so it's perfect. And uh, Wave 4, the next title after Sonic Triple Trouble, is Sonic Drift 2. Why? 
Well, because uh, Fang the Sniper returns, and it's perfect. You got Fang now in a car racing with them after he first appeared in the in the chapter previously. You got Amy there, Metal Sonic's now a racer, Knuckles. It's perfect. All right, so the next chapter I'm going to say is Sonic Labyrinth. Why? I don't know. It just seems like it's fine to be put here in the timeline. Why not? Uh, it's still 94, 95, something like that. So the next chapter after Sonic Labyrinth is a Sonic Archie comic where Sonic and Sally get married. Yes, this is the first time they get married, and it, that's pretty interesting. It shows how they viewed the characters as being important and all that kind of stuff. And this was in 1994. Um, so the next chapter I'm going to say is an issue that I do believe comes after uh, Sonic and Sally get married, like a few issues later. It's this one particular Archie Sonic comic where they make it seem like Sonic is dead and that Sonic had died and they build this statue of Sonic and it's honestly, it's very touching. It's awesome. It's really cool that they really did that and it just showed that all the characters really had a bond and felt something for Sonic as a character, that he was a hero to the Freedom Fighters. And it's a very significant comic. I mean, come on. It's like they think Sonic's dead. It should be in the timeline because the, the stories of the comics, they're storylines. They're chapters in the, this long story of Sonic. This is an important chapter in the long history of these characters where all the, the, the freedom fighters thought Sonic was dead. So it should be in the timeline. It's part of the timeline. Of course, Sonic isn't actually dead. I think he comes back in the next issue, but they make it seem like Sonic's dead. I don't remember exactly how he comes back or how they figure out he's still alive or whatever, but he is still alive. <laughs> so uh, the next chapter I'm going to say after that Sonic comic in particular is an issue from Sonic the Comic where it's from 1995 and it says that Knuckles meets the Chaotix for the first time. Which is really cool and really interesting, and a lot of Sonic fans don't realize this for some frickin' reason, but Knuckles is the leader of the Chaotix. That is his group. And apparently they were already formed, and Knuckles meets them in this comic, and then he becomes their leader. So after that chapter, the next chapter is Knuckles Chaotix for the Sega 32X. Same year, 1995. And it takes place after that Sonic comic, because... Knuckles Chaotix, the game, it establishes that Knuckles is the leader of the Chaotix, and now he knows them, and this is their new adventures. So, yeah, it's perfect. Fifth Wave, okay. So we're still in 1995, so after the Knuckles Chaotix 32X game, we have the Knuckles Chaotix comic book, which was a special they, they had, which was a, like a standalone comic. So this is the comic expanded storyline version of the game. Which is really cool. You got the red evil metal Sonic in there. Uh, Sonic is in there. And at the very end of Knuckles Chaotix, you can actually see Sonic and Tails flying with the tornado and the credits and everything. So yeah, it's perfect. And in this comic in particular, and if this is what I remember, at least, uh, the Sonic and the Freedom Fighters also meet Knuckles and the Chaotix. So it establishes that the Freedom Fighters and the Chaotix, they both meet each other and know each other. For now and for the future storylines of the characters. Okay, so the next chapter is this particular issue of Sonic the Comic. And uh, these Sonic the Comics from the UK, they are in order, uh, the issues. The same thing with the Archie Sonic Comics I'm listing. Uh, at least, uh, I'm not listing every Sonic comic from the UK and every Sonic comic, Archie comic. I'm not listing every single issue in the timeline, because that would take forever. I'm just putting the most significant ones that I feel like are significant to the timeline. Um, because a lot of other things that happen in the storylines of the, of the comics, the two comics, you can fit a lot, some of them in certain areas, and certain areas you can't. So, you know. But anyway, why am I mentioning this one as the next chapter? Well, you got like this orange, red, metal Sonic, who is only appears in this UK comic, and his name is Metal Telex or something. And he has like a hover chair or something, and he's really cool, and he is a Red Metal Sonic, which is also like the evil Red Metal Sonic 
a machine or whatever, Badnik, from Knuckles Chaotix. And it's also 95, so why not? It's the next chapter. It takes place right after. So after that Sonic, uh, the comic that introduces the uh, evil Emperor Metatelix, we have Tails Sky Patrol. Why? Um, I'm not really sure, but I, I think it should be mentioned in the timeline because Tails is spreading his wings, or his tails rather, and he's flying around and he's doing his own unique missions, and there's actually a lot of really interesting trivia behind this game, and while I think the gameplay is a pain in the ass, but it's still charming, and it's cool that Tails got two of his own standalone games for the Game Gear. And it is 1995, so why not? Tails Sky Patrol is the next chapter. Alright, next chapter after Tails Sky Patrol is Sonic 3D Blast, the events of Sonic 3D Blast. The Genesis title. And there was also... A, a Sonic 3D Blast Archie comic, which expanded the story and explained further the story of the game of Sonic 3D Blast. And that same year, in 96, they also had a Sonic the Hedgehog comic, uh, the UK comic with the Flickies. So it, it also explained the Sonic 3D Blast storyline further in both comics. Wave 6, we have Sonic Blast, just Sonic Blast, for the Game Gear, I think this is a great underrated title, by the way. I might do a review on it. I don't think it's a bad Sonic game. I, I think the graphics are really charming, and I don't know, I, I think it's fun. But anyway, I think it should be after Sonic 3D Blast, because you got Knuckles here. And Knuckles and Sonic, they're kind of doing their own thing, where it kind of feels like a 3D remake of Sonic and Knuckles for the Genesis. And... It's perfect for the timeline, because I think it's 96, and Sonic and Knuckles are still frenemies. So they're running around doing their own thing, but they're both trying to stop Robotnik. And, I don't know, it just fits here in the timeline. It is 1996, however. So, we are going through the years. So all the ga you're starting to see that all the games and the comics and the shows, um, even though the shows are a little tricky, it still fits, for the most part. All the years fit in with the game, what they're doing with the games. Like, it all fits in the years as, the, as they go. It's not like it's all completely random. And that's why, you know, back in the day, the Sonic canon was there. It was everywhere. It wasn't just in the games. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's just I wanted to explain the year, uh, the year stuff. I think we're still in 1996, so... I'm going to say the next chapter after Sonic Blast is this particular Sonic Archie comic where Sonic meets Uncle Chuck and Muskie again. And this time they're, uh, they've turned into, they've been roboticized. They've become badniks, which I think actually happened in an earlier comic, but I don't remember the issue. But I think this is where Sonic meets up with them again after a couple of years, which is really sad and tragic. And it's cool that they did this. And I think Sonic's alone when he meets them in the comic. And this is also fitting for Sonic Blast, because he was alone running around in that game, too. So, yeah. It's important, because Uncle Chuck and Muskie are important. I mean, it's Sonic's uncle. It's part of He's part of his family. However, you know, it's a little confusing. I mean, how is... How is Uncle Chuck his actual uncle? Or Do they just say he's his uncle, or is he literally his uncle? I'm gonna just go on a whim and just say yes he, i mean he's his uncle somehow because uncle chuck actually also does appear in sonic underground as well so sure he's his uncle Alrighty, so the next chapter after that sonic comic i'm gonna say is sonic the fighters well it is 1996 and this is a great sonic game fang the snipers in it sbo returns uh we get the introduction of being the dynamite and bark the polar bear it's perfect for the timeline. And also you get Metal Sonic again. You get this new, weird, very short-lived version of Metal Sonic in the intro of Sonic the Fighters. Yeah, so that's good. Next chapter I'm going to say is this particular Sonic comic, Archie comic, where Fang the Sniper returns. I think it should take place after Sonic the Fighters, because maybe we can assume, you know, this is around the same time, pretty much, when Sonic and Fang ran into each other again. It was during the Sonic the Fighters Archie comic 
that Archie comic when it came out in 96. And since there's more, you know, crazy, interesting adventures going on in that Sonic Archie comic where he meets Fang again, we can say it's events that take place after Sonic the Fighters. So this is after they've all fought each other, and now this is the next chapter where Fang is still there, you know. You'll find that Fang appears every now and then through the timeline. Next chapter I'm going to say is this Archie Sonic comic where... It's got Mecha Sonic or something. It's like this uh, unique Metal Sonic version with like gold arms and gold armor and stuff. It seems kind of fitting to put it here in the timeline because all the Metal Sonics are important to the timeline. They're part of the storylines of the games and the comics and stuff. Plus, like I said, Sonic the Fighters introduced that obscure version of Metal Sonic. So now we got another obscure version of Metal Sonic. So it fits in well with these three things. So that's what I'm going to say is the next chapter in the, the final part of the sixth wave here.